Happy Sabbath. <laughs> right on time. <laughs> I got lost here. I went to the wrong way. Colorado, that way. But the number was increasing. It was a perfect number, like 777. <laughs> so I turned around, looking for that perfect number. Happy Sabbath, and um, it is great to be here today, this weekend. And I believe this is my first time at, in this Filipino church. I was here before? <laughs> I did? Long time ago. Okay. Well, this weekend we have a very important topics that is so relevant to our, to our days that we're living in. So before we get into our Bible study, I'd like to invite you to pray with me. Please bow your hands. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this peaceful time when we can come together to study the Bible and open our hearts to seek your truth. As we dive into your word, teach us to search our hearts deeper, that we may see your face see your character, and to understand who we are before your sight. So enlighten us, open our hearts, open our minds. We pray in Jesus' name. Tonight's topic, Michael shall stand. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. Um, I'm just curious. Do any of you have this Daniel Revelation phobia? Your brain, your, your mind, your brain goes into semi-coma when you hear this word Daniel Revelation because it's so complex, so deep, so too much for you. And so we are feeling that brain freeze right now. And I'm not talking about you know, eating ice cream. And if you feel this way at this time, send another prayer to God. And claim the promise. If you ask, He will give it to you, right? If you lack wisdom, He can give it to you. If you believe without wavering, what do you say? And to believe that you are able to understand yeah. deep things in the Bible. And it doesn't matter what kind of grades you had in the past. Forget about those grades. It's American education anyhow. Okay? It doesn't matter. What does matter? That we know the Bible. What do you say? Yeah. So, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And tonight we are not going to study that much. You see, what I like to do is to teach a lot more than to preach. So I really want you to understand what you are reading in your hands. Okay? So in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, it says, And at that time shall Michael Stand up. And tonight's topic, Michael, stand up. That's all. When we understand who is 
might go. And then, if we can understand what it means when he stands up, then we can rightly study the first three phrases or three words. And forget that one. At that time. What time is that? At that time, who? Michael, what is he going to do? Stand up. Stand up. What does that mean? And I'm not sure what you how much you studied the book of Daniel before. And if I ask you the question, in the book of Daniel, chapter 1 through 12, which chapter, where do, would you like to say that is the climactic point in the book of Daniel? Many of you may say Daniel 8.14, like any other good Seventh-day Adventist. And God bless you for that. However, if you ask me, I have to say Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Because when Michael stands up, somehow, for some reason, that means everything is done. To me, that is a climactic point in the book of Daniel. Everything leads up to this particular declaration, this phrase. At that time. What time is that? We're going to figure that out tomorrow. But we've got to figure out who is Michael. And what does it mean when he stands up? Are we together? Yeah. Not too hard, right? Even third grade can understand this. Amen? Yeah. All right. Number one. Who is Michael? Jesus. Now, that's a good answer. That's the right answer. But, listen, you have to have some Bible text. It's okay. I know this is a big auditorium, but you can shout out if you need to. Give me a Bible text that says, Michael is Jesus. Good thing we don't have any pop up after this meeting, huh? We have all time. By the way, this is Seventh day Adventist church, right? People that study the Bible a lot. I can prove everything from the Bible. Yeah. Give me a Bible text. Michael is Jesus. Just help me with just one Bible text. Jude. Jude. Oh. Very good. But that's not enough. Well, Revelation chapter 12, it just says Michael is fighting the dragon. It doesn't really explain Michael. Do you really want to use that text? Yeah, go ahead, laugh. Okay, let's put these verses together. Are we ready? What you need to do, listen, please, when you listen to this presentation, I'm not here to just to excite you, nor to spiritually entertain you. You are not here this weekend just to hear another wonderful good sermon. You have to know that time is now for you to be equipped. Spiritually equipped. But in order to be spiritually equipped, your intellectual understanding of the Bible has to be solid. So whatever you believe, you need to be able to back it up. If you cannot support what you believe, you may change what you believe. Think about that. If you cannot show me what you believe is true from the Bible, you may change. So, let's, here's my, there, I'm sure there are many ways to explain who's Michael. And yes, Michael is mentioned in the book of Daniel, and we can use that, but here's one way they can show who Michael is. In the book of Jude, go there, it's a tiny book just before the book of Revelation. 
Jude. In fact, they, they could have called this book, Book of Jude, Judas, Judas, Jude, same thing. But don't panic, it's not that Judas, okay? All right, here we go. Jude, verse 9, the Bible says, Yet Michael, the what? Archangel. You can read the rest of the text, but all we know about the Archangel in the Bible text, excuse me, all we know about Michael in the text is what? Who is Michael? Archangel. Archangel. That's all we have. Michael is Archangel. Now what we need to do, study more about Archangel. What do you say? Yeah? So, okay, Michael is Archangel. By the way, before we continue, what does it mean? Archangel. It sounds nice, right? What does that mean? English is not my first language, so American people, please help me to understand. <laughs> Commander, Ark, means the leader, the chief, the head, commander. All right, Archangel. So Michael is the leader of? The angels. All right, that's what it means. All right. Let's continue. Come with me to 1 Thessalonians. So, so in the book of Jude, we have to establish this fact. Michael is Archangel. I mean, that is crystal clear. Then you go to, by the way, we want to study more about Archangel, right? So you start searching. Archangel in the Bible, and you come to this particular Bible text in the New Testament, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. All right. I'm going to read this Bible text, then I'm going to ask you a very simple question, nothing profound, deep, or spiritually complicated. Nothing like that. Very simple question about the archangel, okay? So, here we go. Let's read it first. The Bible says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise. First, stop right there. In that, in that Bible text, within that verse, what do we know about Archangel? I'm asking you a very simple question. Nothing complicated, not too deep, it's right there. What do we know about Archangel according to this Bible text? Voice. Voice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we got, right? The Bible says, the voice of Archangel. I know you may think that should be the obvious thing. You know, angels, a leader of angels, he should be, you know, he should have voice. I understand that should be an obvious thing. But when it is described in the Bible, you need to pay attention. If you say this man has two arms, pay attention. If the Bible says that. There's a reason why the Bible says, this man has two arms. Okay? So, what do we know about Archangel in 1 uh, Thessalonians chapter uh, 4, verse 16? He has voice. All right. The voice of Archangel, according to this Bible text, something happens because of his voice. What happens? The dead in Christ shall rise first. So the voice of Archangel can do what? Raise the dead. Yes or no? Are we together? Am I making things up? <laughs> no, right? Okay. There are too many, 
I think there are too many religious people just making things up from the Bible. Please, let's, let's not do that. So, voice of the archangel, the shout of the, from the, the Lord is coming with great shout, voice of archangel, and the trump of God, all of them combined, including the voice of archangel, it can raise the dead. dead. Keep that in mind. So, who is Michael? Let's review. Who is Michael? Archangel. Voice of Archangel can do what? Raise the dead. But you know, it is always better to confirm something is true if you have more than one witness. Because Jesus said, based on witnesses of two or three, every word or every truth is being established. Are you listening? So, who wrote Thessalonians? Paul. So Paul says, Paul says, voice of archangel can raise the dead. So do we have one more witness that says archangel can raise the dead? In fact, yes. The, the verse that we were just on. Go back to Jude. Jude, verse 9. Jude, verse 9. Are you there? Are you there? Okay. Jude, verse 9. Here we go. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the who? The devil. He disputed about the body of Moses. So tell me from the Bible, Michael and who? The devil. devil. What were they doing? Disputing. Disputing. What does that mean? Arguing, Arguing about what? Body. The body of Moses. When the Bible says the body of Moses, what is that talking about? When it says body, what is that? Body of Moses. I think some other translation it says corpse of Moses. So they're fighting over dead body of Moses. Why they, so why is Jesus fighting the devil over the dead body of Moses? What do you uh, what can you get? Where is Moses today? In heaven. Did Moses die? Yes. That means he got resurrected. So, Michael fighting over the body of Moses, that means Michael is trying to do what? Raise Moses to life. Here we have another confirmation. Are we together? Michael the archangel, he does what? Raise the dead. Are we good so far? Okay, so what do we know about Michael? His archangel. What can he do? He can raise the dead. All right, then who is this archangel? Don't just jump to say Jesus. You have to reason things out. Don't go too fast. Okay, I know you live in California, but don't go too fast. All right. Some reasoning. Huh. So someone can say, someone can say, whoa, Archangel can raise the dead. Angel can raise the dead. Angels can raise the dead. True or false? Ah. Uh, if angels can raise the dead, what does that mean about Lucifer? Ah, uh, no, right? Okay, okay, okay. So we have to make some, okay, some qualifications, meaning, according to the Bible, only who can raise the dead? Beautiful, Jesus, but give me a Bible text. Revelation 1.18. How do you know that Jesus is the only one? The best text that I know, I mean, 
You may have a better text, God bless you if you do. But the one that I think is pretty good, I mean, pretty solid, is in the book of Revelation. Come with me. To the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. By the way, do we have some non Adventists here tonight? Buddhist, Hindu, Islam, New Age? Anybody? Non Christians, atheists? God bless you. Thanks for coming. Make sure you get a free lunch tomorrow, okay? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 1. And look with me, verse 18. Are you there? Okay, by the way, just to save some time, unless you can be here until midnight, just to save some time, um, verse 18, when it says, I am he that liveth, Jesus is talking here. And that is clear. If you want to know to confirm that, just read the rest of the chapter. Then you will see. Jesus is speaking, and he said, I am he that what? Liveth, meaning he is living, and was dead, meaning he got resurrected, was dead, and behold, I am alive for evermore. He will continue to live forevermore. Okay. Then he says, Amen. And he says, have the what? Keys. What do you do with keys? You open the door, you close it, right? You open it or you lock it. I have the keys of what? Hell. The word hell, uh, if you're not familiar with this, you're thinking hell meaning like burning fire. Well, in the Greek language, the, the word hell just simply means grave. So it says, have the keys of hell or grave and of death. So according to the book of Revelation, who has the keys to hell and death? Jesus. That means he can close it and he can open it. So only Jesus, he has the authority, keys to resurrect. Are we together? Only Jesus. And we are going to confirm this by reading John 11. John 11, the famous story about raising uh, Lazarus from the tomb, and Jesus said, regarding himself, John chapter 11, verse 25, he said, look at this, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He said, I am the resurrection and life. He has the keys of hell and death. And then, John chapter 5. This text will just bring everything together in good, nice conclusion. John chapter 5 and verse 28. Are you there? The Bible says, marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the way grain shall hear his voice. Again, contextually speaking, when the Bible says his voice, it is talking about the voice of the Son of God or Son of Man, Jesus. His voice, voice of Jesus. What happens? 29, and shall come forth they that have done good unto resurrection of life. There you go. So, Revelation chapter 1 says, Jesus has the keys to hell and death. John chapter 11 says, He is the, he said, he said, I am the resurrection of life. And John chapter 5 makes it very clear, by His voice, death can be resurrected. So then, we already, we already disqualified this conclusion about anybody where all angels can raise the dead. 
So the question is, only who can raise the dead? According to the Bible, Jesus. Only His voice. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, it says, Voice of Archangels. So therefore, we have to conclude the voice of Archangel has to be Jesus. Because only Jesus, His voice, can raise the dead. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, that's how you show Michael is Jesus. That was like, uh, what, 20 minutes? 25 minutes? Do you feel like we just waste our time? But so we're we thinking, oh, Michael, Archangel, Archangel, Jesus. So Jesus is angel. So he's not God? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, so, please don't go there. I understand. If you're thinking that way, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, because that's what it says, right? But keep this in mind, keep this in mind. When you study the whole Bible, there are more than 200 names and descriptions for Jesus. Did you know that? Yeah. Just to give you a few, in the Bible, he's called the branch. And don't tell me he's literally a branch. Branch. Twig. Literally. He can bend. Is he? No, no, no. The Bible says he is the Lamb of God. Don't tell me he is literally, you know, a really nice beast. The Bible says he is the rock. Please don't tell me he is rock. Do you understand? When the Bible says he is the rock, he is the foundation. He is the Lamb of God. He is the sacrifice. He is the branch. He is the life giver. Are you with me? He is one that connects, brings righteousness to you. So Archangel, just Archangel is one of his many names. So Archangel or Michael, what is that describing? It is describing Jesus as the captain of all angels. Are you with me? He is the captain of all the angels in heaven. That's all. Now, if you want to go a little deeper, the name Michael. Do, how many Michaels? Do we have Michaels here tonight? Any Michaels? Yeah? Our Filipinos like the Korean people. Name all their children Michael and John. <laughs> David, Samuel. That's the reason why we have so many John Cho, John Kim. We have some Michaels here tonight. Do you know the meaning of your name? Michael. No, it does not mean Archangel. <laughs> I mean, literally speaking, I mean, according to the Hebrew background, Michael means one that is like unto God. That's what he means. That's what he means. And who is he? Jesus. And that name is to describe him as a captain or the captain over all the angels. All right. So going back to Daniel chapter 12, verse 5. At that time, Michael, now we know who Michael is. Yes. Jesus. And the Bible says, Jesus, but because the Bible described our Savior, the Bible could have said, and at that time, shall Jesus stand up? Yes or no? Yes. You may say, oh, that's not possible, because that was in the Old Testament. Okay, okay. How about this? And at, at the time, shall Emmanuel stand up? Yeah? Still makes sense, right? Still makes sense. Or you can say, at the time, um, the Messiah will stand up. Yes? Yeah. But, see, every detail is there for a specific purpose. If a captain, Michael's a captain, yes? yes. Uh, by the way, 
is very interesting, very interesting, in the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse 6 and 7, Michael is mentioned, and what is he doing? Fighting. Jude, verse 9, Michael is mentioned, what is he doing? Fighting. Michael is mentioned in Daniel chapter 10, what is he doing? Fighting. Who is Michael? He's a captain. He is in a battle, in war. Are you with me? All right. So, when Michael stands up, what can you conclude? What can you guess? I know your guess can be totally wrong, but just try to guess. It's okay. Have courage. Battle is over. Battle is over, so you fight sitting down. <laughs> Me and Michael stands up. What can you get? What can you get? Huh? He's going to? He's going to fight, right? He's going to war. He's going to fight. I'm sure it's got to be something like that, right? But if the Bible says, then Emmanuel stands up, it gives you the idea of, oh, God is going to be with us now. Yeah? The Lamb of God stands up. Oh, he's going to, he's going to make the final sacrifice. Yes? Are you with me? The branch is standing up. That's kind of weird, but... Uh, <laughs> everything is there for a specific purpose. Yes? So Michael stands up. He's about to go. Fight. It's got to be something like that. But let's study a little bit more. Okay, so we got Michael. Are we, are we good? Now, let's go into... The understanding of what does it mean? Stand up. Stand up. What does that mean? Authority. Yeah. Whenever you study the Bible, I know this phrase "stand up" is a very simple phrase. It's not a big deal, but stand up. <laughs> How can you have spiritual revival from that phrase, stand up? Um, but it's always good, always good to not overlook even simple phrases like that. Now, I'm not saying you should go and study every time of is mentioned. I'm not, that's too much. <laughs> Or the word and. I want to study and in every, every text in the Bible. That's too much. Okay, that's, you may go a little crazy. Don't, don't do that. But, stand up. It's a simple phrase, but what, is, what, what does it mean according to the Bible? According to the Bible expression. Yeah, according to Bible expression. In, in Korea, in Korea, you're sitting down eating and somebody comes. If you stand up, you know what that means? Is, you know, you're Asians. I'm going to have many Asians here tonight. It's to show respect, right? Yeah. So in different cultures, different, you know, different settings, we have different um, connotations. So according to the Bible, what does it mean? And the best place to, to, to look for the, the contextual meaning is in the book of Daniel. And believe it or not, that phrase, stand up, is used a lot in Daniel chapter 11. And I'm going to tell you this tomorrow. It's not a big secret, but Daniel 11 is connected to Daniel 12. <laughs> and please don't look at me like, that was so profound. <laughs> But, but don't miss that. Daniel 11 is the, it's the prelude. In Daniel 11, just to show to you, look with me. Daniel 11. Are you there? Daniel 11, in verse... Two, in a sense, it begins with these phrases, 
stand up. Let me show you. Verse 2. And now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there shall what? Stand up. Stand up yet three kings in Persia. So who's standing up? Kings. All right. Verse 3. And a mighty king shall what? Stand up. See that? So who's standing up again? King. And verse 4. When he shall what? Stand up. You see, again and again and again in the book of, Revel uh, in the book of Daniel chapter 11, you will see this phrase, stand up, stand up, stand up. So then, the meaning behind that phrase, stand up, should be the same in chapter 11 and chapter 12. Are you with me? And in chapter 11, it's usually king or a political power. Stand up. And what does it mean, stand up? It just simply means his political power, his dominion, his kingdom is beginning. That's what it means. Again, we can go through the whole thing. We don't have time. You can always go back and study chapter 11. It would be a wonderful chapter to read just before you go to bed. <laughs> if you're not interested, you fall asleep just like that. <laughs> Guaranteed. Only those who are really diligently searching for the truth will stay up all night. And that's okay. Amen. So, when you study Daniel 11, you'll see this phrase, stand up, stand up, stand up. And it is talking about this political power starting, this kingdom starting, this nation starting. Yes? So then, based upon that background of that phrase, stand up, what does it mean when the Bible says, Michael shall stand up? What does that mean? His power, his dominion, his kingdom is about to what? About to start. Exactly. Exactly. And Daniel 12, verse 1, it says, And at that time shall Michael, sh uh, 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 shall Michael stand up, the great one? Prince. Prince. There you go. Not only is a captain, but he is also called? Prince. Prince. And I'm sure Prince should be the leader of all his army, so to speak. All right. So then, Michael, stand up. So what does it mean now? Kingdom of Michael begins. Kingdom of Jesus begins. Or kingdom of God begins. Are you with me? So if we put the whole thing together, chapter 11 and chapter 12, this will be happy, okay? Chapter 11, you have mentioning of the kingdom of Persia, stand up, right? And the kingdom of Greece, stand up. The kingdom of Rome, stand up. King of the north, stand up. And then there's a, and there's a uh, battle between king of the north, king of the south, king of the north, king of the south, stand up. And then, after all these earthly Worldly, mega, superpower nation, all right? But at the end, Michael, what? Standing up, meaning kingdoms of the world is about to, to be done, to be, to be vanished. And now is a time for the kingdom of God to, to start, to, to be established. Are we, are we together? Are we together? So at the end, Michael says, it is enough. It's a time for the kingdom of God to be set up. Amen. And it's complete. It's finished. And I'm coming back as king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. This is the idea. Are you able to follow what we are doing here tonight? Amen. All right. But there's a deeper meaning. There's a deeper meaning. Are you 
ready for this? Okay. I'm going to ask you a very simple question, and I am expecting a simple answer, okay? So to, don't go too deep. Not too deep. The Bible says, at that time, Michael shall stand. What was he doing before? Thank you so much. <laughs> I know, it's, it's not a, it doesn't sound so profound, right? <clears throat> we cannot start a new church with Michael sitting down, you know. It's not that profound. <clears throat> but, you know, I'm a simple guy with simple questions. What does it mean then? All right, now we understood. Michael, stand up. His kingdom begins. Okay, we got that. But maybe we can understand the deeper meaning of Michael stand up if we understand what it means when Jesus was sitting down. Are you with me? Yeah, because Jesus sitting down is the opposite of Jesus standing up, yes? So what does it mean, Jesus sitting down? So in the Bible, in the Bible, do we have any Bible verses that that talks about Jesus sitting down in heaven? Do we have any Bible verses like that? Yeah, you got it? You got it? Uh, come with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Are you there? Yeah. Hebrews 12 and verse 2. And if you're worrying about tomorrow's potluck, please don't worry about tomorrow's potluck, okay? Ponce can be ready in a short time. <laughs> okay, Hebrews chapter 12. Are you there? Yeah. And verse 2, the Bible says, Looking unto Jesus, Jesus the author and the treasure of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despite the shame is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. All right. So here we have a Bible text. So the Bible says, after the death of Jesus, after his resurrection, when Jesus went up to heaven, where did he go? Yes, heaven, but where did he go? At the right hand of God. But what is he doing there? The Bible says he sat down at the right hand of God. Yes? Okay. I know. Some of you are thinking, oh, that's all Jesus is doing? Just sitting around? That's all he's doing? You know, <clears throat> Truthfully, I cannot imagine Jesus sitting down for more than 2,000 years. <laughs> now, now that is the, the Bible expression. Bible expressed Jesus in heaven as sitting down at the right hand of God. Okay? Perhaps, literally speaking, he's standing up, sitting down. That I don't know. But to describe what Jesus is doing in heaven, perhaps this, this may be more spiritually broad, meaning it says he is sitting down at the right hand of God. Are you with me? Okay, so I don't have this you know, blocked in idea that that's all he's doing, sitting down. No, there's something very important. So let's get clear. So when Jesus went up to heaven, he sat down at the right hand of God. Okay. Do we have any more information about sitting down at the right hand of God? Come with me to Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8 and verse 1. The Bible says this. 
Now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum, summary. We have such and what? High priest. High priest. Who is set on the what? Right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heaven. So do we have an additional information about Jesus sitting down at the right hand of God there? He is sitting at the right hand of God as what? High priest. High priest. Thank you. We, put, we are putting the pieces of the puzzles together, right? Okay. So, after the death of Jesus, he went up to heaven. He sat down at the right hand of God. And he is sitting there as our high priest. Okay. So then, what is the main work of the high priest? <coughs> According to the Bible. <coughs> Intercession. But let's get it from the Bible, shall we? Hebrews 7 and verse 25. Hebrews 7, verse 25. Are you there? It says, Wherefore he is able also to...